Empire Sky Base rises from the surface to rest into orbit. On the surface below, thousands upon thousands of cogs and artillery move to their dropships. We just intercepted another nuclear missile from Earth, Father. I do not understand why Zed has such trouble with the Earthlings. And they still use primitive nuclear technology. Nor do I understand why we must wait. If it were up to me, we would have invaded already. We should not underestimate the humans, father. That was Zed's mistake. Mondo sneers and looks over to Zed, fused into the wall of the throne room, kept barely alive and conscious enough to hear them. Yes, but as I understand it, the rangers are weak. Their base is destroyed. The longer we wait, the more time they will have to regroup. A gold, feminine-looking robot speaks up as she fans herself. Her name is Queen Machina, mated to Mondo in a partnership few can comprehend. Attacking the Earth without a plan was another one of Zed's mistakes. We are almost ready. We need to amass our forces a little more, and then we will be able to destroy their most powerful governments and bring them to their knees. How much longer? I grow tired of waiting. A mere few hours, father. Their world has seen its last sunrise. At Sector Omega, Private Ryan Maxwell hands Bill Mitchell a reading of the most recent nuclear weapon sent to the moon. Negative impact, sir. Damn it. We keep sending stronger weapons and they keep finding ways to neutralize them. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. Permission to speak freely, sir. Granted. It's been three days, sir, and they haven't invaded yet. Maybe, maybe they're not hostile. We can't afford to think that. Our satellites show that they're building an army. They wouldn't be doing that if they were going to come in peace. And if what the rangers say is true, the machines are going to do much worse than anything we've had to deal with so far. But what can the rangers do? Two of them don't even have their powers anymore. Their base is destroyed, and their mentor along with it. All we were able to recover was some sort of black box. And trying to reverse engineer Serpentera is taking forever. We can only do what we can at this point. The Rangers are our best hope. Frankly speaking, they are our only hope. 
Surveillance is sending me a sighting in Sydney. Another bird monster? No. It's Goldar. He surfaced. Tommy, Adam, and Billy enter Mitchell's office. We got your message. Goldar? Seems like it. But I'm not sending you in, Tommy. Why? Uh, for starters, you're powerless. Maybe I can take some of that serpent hair attack. Even with that, you're a liability. The other rangers can't protect you and fight Goldar at the same time. So it's better you stay here, at least until we get your powers fixed. It's just going to be Billy, Adam, and Rocky on this one. Wait, where's Rocky? I don't think he wants to come. He's still pretty shaken up about Aisha. Well, whatever you need to do to unshake him, do it. This is the first sighting of Goldar in days. If we take him out, then we only have to worry about the machines. We can try to talk to him, but I can't promise anything. You know how stubborn he can be. I'll come with you. No, Tommy, he's definitely not going to want to talk to you. It just has to be me and Billy. <sighs> All right. Billy pushes Adam out of the room. I just wish I could be more useful. I hate sitting around doing nothing. Not everyone can fight on the battlefield. A lot of the biggest wars are fought in offices like this one. If you want to do something, that's where you can help. What do you mean? As of 48 hours ago, Sector Omega has an official name. The president signed a treaty with 12 other nations to form the UAOH, Union Against Otherworldly Hostiles. This facility will be its American branch. That's great. We can pool our resources. It also means sharing the information we have. That's why I'm sending you to Washington. Washington? No, no. I can't go to D.C. with everything going on. What am I even supposed to do? You need to meet with the president's cabinet and tell them everything you know. All about Zordon, the Rangers, Bandora, your encounters with the machines, how you got captured and cloned. Uh, about that. Now is not the time to be shy, son. Zed thought he was ruining your lives by exposing your identities. But the truth is, no one cares. Not when we're at war. The world can't afford another Chicago or Sydney. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. When? Immediately. I'm also sending Catherine Hillard with you. At the mess hall, Catherine Hillard is having her breakfast when a figure sits next to her. It is Tanya Sloan. Tanya? Hey, you're here too. I've been here. Once Zordon and Alpha finished forging my papers, they sent me to this place. I'm supposed to meet with someone named Bill Mitchell. He's supposed to help me get adjusted to society, but every time I try to talk to him, they always say he's busy. How have you and the other rangers been? You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? Rita attacked a bunch of us. My parents. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kat. I had no idea. And then Mitchell told me Goldar blew up the command centre. Tommy, Rocky, Billy and Adam are hiding out here. Zed exposed all their identities so everyone knows who they are. Really? When did he do that? Haven't you seen the news? What is the news? Ah, oh, right. I forgot. You're from a post-apocalyptic timeline. Everything here must feel so different and weird to you. Tell me about it. Alpha created a passport and social security card for me, but I have no idea what those are for. There are also other things I need to be caught up on, like taxes, the internet, vaccines. It's also confusing. Part of me wishes I never left. What about the ice cream you wanted? Did you at least get to try that? That's the thing. I haven't even been allowed to go out. I've only seen the walls of the command center and the space for the past month. Why don't you come with me today? Mitchell is sending me to Washington, D.C. I'm supposed to tell them everything I know about the aliens. You come too. It'd be a good chance for you to see something new. Fine with me. Anything beats staying here. 
Billy escorts Adam into Rocky's quarters. Rocky is lying on his bed, staring at the ceiling. What do you want? Well, we finally sighted Goldar. Mitchell wants us to go. Why didn't you ask our Lord and Savior Tommy to help you? After all, he's the only ranger that matters. You know Tommy doesn't have his powers anymore. Rocky gets up to a seated position. He clenches his fists in rage. And that's what really frustrates me. Aisha sacrificed herself to bring Tommy and Kimberly back. And for what? Tommy is powerless and Kim decided to run away to France. What was even the point? Rocky, I don't know what injury showed Aisha. But in the future that I saw, we all died fighting against the Machine Empire. If Aisha thought there was some way to prevent that, wouldn't you do what she did? No. I wouldn't because I would have found another way. Just like how I said it was stupid to trust Vilius and you didn't listen. I keep saying sorry. Believe me, I wish I never used the orb. Billy puts his shaking hands in his pockets. Rocky, we really do need your help. I don't see how you can be so calm about this, Adam. You knew Aisha just as long as I did. And she didn't even bother to say goodbye. Why am I the only one grieving around here? I am trying to make her sacrifice mean something. You should too. Fight with us. No. I'm done being a ranger. This job has taken too much from me. Our families are in witness protection. We can't even show our faces outside since Zed exposed us. I also have that stupid Andrew Grove cartel after me. There's no point to this anymore. We've all lost something, but if we don't keep fighting, other people are going to lose more. Well, you fight the good fight, because I'm done. In the teleportation room, Mitchell and Tommy wait as Billy returns with Adam. No luck with Rocky? He doesn't want to come. I'll talk with him later. I'll send a few of my men to be your backup. Radio me if you need anything. Mitchell gestures his soldiers to stand on the teleportation pad. Billy then wheels Adam onto the pad. He bends down to Adam and whispers into his ear. I forgot what I'm supposed to say to Morph. You say Triceratops Wolf Ranger Power. Are you sure you can do this? Yeah, yeah, I got it. What are you talking about? Go already before Goldar disappears! Okay, we're ready. It's Morphin' time! Mastodon Frog, Ranger Power! Triceratops, Wolf Ranger Power! After Adam and Billy teleport away, Mitchell notices Kat and Tanya enter the room. Catherine, are you ready to go? And you, uh... I'm sorry, I don't think we've been introduced. Tanya Sloan. Zordon and Alpha sent me? Oh, right, the one from the other dimension. <sighs> Two years ago, I would have been surprised to say that sentence, but it feels like a standard Wednesday now. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't met with you yet. Things have been, uh, really busy lately. I told Tanya she can come with me and Tommy. Be my guest. There's nothing she can do here anyway. You three will be teleported to a military installation on the outskirts of D.C., from there, someone will drive you to the White House where you will debrief the cabinet on what you know. Good luck. Tommy, Kat, and Tanya step onto the teleporter pad and vanish in light. Afterward, Private Maxwell steps up to Mitchell. Sir, I got another message. It's from a Lieutenant Stone of the UAOH Division in Canada. He wants to speak with you. Give him my office number. I'll receive it there. He says he needs to speak with you in person. It's important. Prep the teleporter, then. Does he have a pad that I can land on? Unfortunately, no pad, sir. But he gave coordinates that you can land on. While I'm gone, can you handle the op of the rangers? Don't forget, sir. I was a former ranger myself. It shouldn't be too difficult. Very well, then. Let's see what this Lieutenant Stone wants. Mitchell steps on the teleporter and reappears in another facility. He is greeted by a man in a black military uniform, 
already adorned with the new division patch. Hi, you must be Bill Mitchell, Lieutenant Jerome Stone. You don't sound Canadian. <laughs> I'm not. From Angel Grove, actually. But I had a few... run-ins back when I was a cop there. So they offered me this job. The salary and medical plan is worth a career change. And the cold. <laughs> Started out in civil service myself. But man, the folks in D.C. can move fast when they want to. Well, the charter only just officially got signed. But it's been in the works for months. I arrived here a week ago. Well, I'm pressed for time. And I doubt you brought me here to give you your job history. <laughs> yes, uh, of course. Sorry. This is the Zeo Crystal. Stone points to a translucent white crystal placed in a holder upon a lab table before them. The Zeo Crystal? What's that? And why should I care? Well, until recently, it was in the possession of Lord Zed and his forces. We're told that it's a power source created eons ago. Once unlocked, it can separate into five subcrystals that can create new ranger powers. Ranger powers? How? Well, we're told it can be done by a staff that you have in your archives. It should have been inside part of the remains of Serpentera, and our source says it was never recovered by Zed or his men. Your source? You better come with me. Stone walks Mitchell to another room. Along the way, Mitchell gets a view of the base. There are stone walls. The computers are decades old. Phones are wired and still attached to the wall. This place looks ancient. Hmm. Yeah. It was built during the Cold War as a military bomb shelter. It had four floors dedicated to ensuring the survival of mankind in the event of a nuclear catastrophe. The place fell into disarray once the Cold War ended, but once the alien invasions began, it was unfortunately deemed necessary again. It's been years. They haven't had the chance to change the corded phones. As I said, the place hasn't been maintained in a long time, and it was only within the last few months plans really started being made to move back in. All the systems are still analog. We're hoping that, with the treaty now in effect, your nation can share the alien technology it has found. Believe me, I wish the majority of alien battles didn't occur on U.S. soil, but it is what it is. Mitchell has walked through a set of double doors to a hospital room. There, on a hospital bed, lies Trey of Triforia. Lieutenant Stone, is this him? Yes, Captain Mitchell. This is Trey, an alien from the planet Triforia. He served on Zed's vessel. You work for Zed? You're taking the word of an enemy who jumped off the sinking ship to save his own ass? I served with them, but I am not one of them. I was held captive against my will. Before I escaped, I stole the Zeo Crystal and randomly teleported myself away. He was found half frozen to death in the wastelands of Alberta by local mountaineers. A team of ours brought him here. My wrist teleporter was damaged when I landed. It is only because of them that I am still alive now. Uh, well why don't you start your story from the beginning before I have your ass arrested? <sighs> Very well. My name is Trey. I was born to Almalon and Tressa as prince of the planet Triforia. In war-torn Sydney, Australia, the Blue and Black Rangers do battle with the Imperial Remnant, now headed by the half-cybernetic Goldar. Surrender, Goldar. There's nowhere left to run. I shall never surrender to you. Not as long as I draw breath. That can be arranged. Face it, two rangers are not enough. Even if you defeat me, the machines will still destroy your world. Then why are we fighting? Join us! Help us defeat them! Death at your hands is preferable to what they will do to me. Kill me, or die by my hand. That is how it must end. 
as you wish. Goldar fights as valiantly as he can, but in the end, he is no match for two remaining Power Rangers. He falls to his knees. His sword gets disarmed by an uphand swing from Adam's axe. <laughs> Billy then brings down his power lance and slashes it across Goldar's throat. <laughs> the lights of his machine parts go dark as his body falls to the ground. Goldar is no more. Finally, it's over. Or the Battle of Zed and Rita, maybe. But you heard him. The machines are... Ah! Billy? Adam runs over to Billy as the Blue Ranger drops to his knees, clutching himself in pain, his power suit flashing on and off his body, then finally failing. Ah! Sorry! I, I don't know what's happening! It must be the time sickness. We need to get you back to Sector Omega. Adam frowns as he hears the sound of energy, then looks back towards Goldar's body. It is gone. Uh, Mitchell, did you just take Goldar's body? This is Ryan Maxwell. Mitchell had to step away. Did something happen to Goldar? Is he defeated? Yeah, yeah, he's down for sure, but his body just got beamed somewhere. Are you sure you guys didn't take him? Negative. It was nothing on our end. Okay. Well, Billy and I need to evac. He's hurt. Bringing you home. Moments later, Adam, in his Black Ranger suit, re-emerges at Sector Omega and helps Billy off the pad. Get Billy to a doctor quick. Maxwell and Adam watch with concern as Billy is helped out by a medical team. Maxwell then looks back to Adam. What did you say happened with Goldar? I don't know. He just disappeared. And that is the truth of it. That is why I am here. I believe that I can help unlock the secrets of the crystal, allow you to use it to become the Zeo Warriors, or as you may call them, Zeo Rangers. Well, son, that's, uh, that's a hell of a tale. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some calls to make. Mitchell looks to Stone. If you can vouch for this alien, I'll trust your judgment. I have no reason to lie, Captain Mitchell. We are all on the same side. We want to prevent the next alien invasion, and the way I see that, having five additional rangers is the best way to do that. Okay, Trey. So what does this staff look like? We are ready. Father. Then let it begin as planned. Start by destroying all of Earth's major militant governments. Then they will hear my demands. Clank! Orbis! Yes, sire? A slender robot of bronze and silver saddles up, carrying a much smaller, round machine. Launch the Quadro fighters. Have the COG forces on standby. As you wish. Well, at your command, my king. And send out the Techno Neutralizer. Let us see how they fight us without their technology. Adam looks over to Billy as he wakes up. Hey, how are you doing? I'm sorry, who are you? It's me, Adam. Adam. Oh, right. Billy, you're really losing it if you can't remember me. Your hands are still shaking. Are you still able to morph? I don't know. I mean, I can try. What's my morphing call again? Billy, this can't go on. We have to tell the other rangers or Captain Mitchell. Maybe one of them can figure out how to help you. No, I, I don't want to bother anybody with my problems. I can figure this out. But you haven't been figuring it out. What if you die? Look, if they focus on me, they won't be focusing on the machines. And then we all die. Be I, I can't have that on my conscience. This needs to stay between us. 
Look, Billy, I just... What's going on? Can't be anything good. Do you have the energy to move? I, I think so. Then let's go see what's going on. Cat, Tanya, and Tommy sit in a military van as they are driven to the White House. Cat fights back tears as Tommy explains everything that has happened the past few days. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. Aisha. I know. She's just another one in a long line of people to die for me. Kaku, Dulcia, Ninjori, my mom. Why do I get to live and they don't? But what if they're right? Remember what Dracon said, you're supposed to be this great ranger who inspires many other teams to follow in his footsteps. The Tommy Oliver of my world was an evil warlord who enslaved and killed everyone. Compared to that, being a legendary ranger doesn't sound so bad. Why me? Why am I so goddamn important? Because I've had more than one ranger color? How am I supposed to inspire anyone when I can't even morph? I should have been with Billy and Adam fighting in Sydney, but my coin doesn't think I'm worthy anymore. Come on, that can't be true. Then why can't I connect to it? Maybe your death has something to do with it. Like you can't connect to a coin from a previous life or something. Why would that be a thing? To stop zombie rangers? I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas out there. Like, is there any way for you to get new powers? I don't think so. Ninjori's gone, and so are Alpha and Zordon. And without a full team of rangers, we're just sitting ducks for the machines when they decide to attack. We stopped! What's going on? The vehicle shakes as an explosion sounds. The sound of fire follows, smoke filling the back of the truck. <coughs> the truck! It's on fire! <coughs> we have to get out of here! Tommy holds his breath as the flames slowly reach the back of the car. He kicks the doors open and forces them out. <coughs> Once outside, the three look up to see Washington, D.C. burning. People screaming and running for their lives, as up above, strange octopus-looking fighters rain down laser fire. Before their eyes, they see the White House fired upon and destroyed. And in the distance, they see another explosion as the half-reconstructed Capitol building falls as well. Oh God, it's happening. Cat holds up her cell phone and dials a number. Mitchell, we need you to teleport us out. The machines are invading. Yeah. The cell phone explodes in Cat's hand. Cat just able to throw it away in time to not be burned. Yeah. What the hell was that? Tommy looks around. All around him, he sees pedestrians with their phones and tablets exploding. Quick, get rid of your electronic devices. Tanya and Cat do as order, throwing their phones and earpieces away. They explode as soon as they hit the pavement. The machines must have done something to shut down every piece of technology. A trio of fighters then come, firing on the civilians. Blasts now coming at Cat, Tommy, and Tanya. The three run for their lives. <laughs> The Quadro fighters quickly catch up. Laser bolts fired, but the three are teleported away, just in time. At Sector Omega, Tommy, Kat, and Tanya reappear on the teleportation pad. Tommy immediately runs down. Thank God I can still lock onto your communicators. Where's Mitchell? He should be teleporting in right now. Moments later, Mitchell reappears on the teleportation pad. Please tell me that's not what I think it is. The 
machines have invaded, sir. It's happening all over the world. DC, London, Tokyo, even Moscow. We're trying to fight them, but our devices are going haywire. We were barely able to teleport you and the Rangers. Ah, God! And everything is just randomly blowing up. Damn! Today of all days! Mitchell takes out his cell phone and throws it on the ground. It immediately blows up. Sir, last I checked, the machine fighters were on their way to the west coast. They'll be here in a matter of minutes. Then we're as good as dead. Sound the retreat. Aye, sir. But where are they to go? Transport them to whatever base will take them. The teleporter system is haywire, sir. All it remembers is your last location. Then send them there! Might be the last base we have. Maxwell nods and heads over to press the button for the base-wide intercom. This is Ryan Maxwell, on the orders of Captain Mitchell. All hands are to abandon the base. We are under attack. Repeat, we are under attack. Head to the teleporter room now. From the chaos of running people emerge Adam and Billy. What's happening? The machines! Should we take out the ninja zords? From the looks of it, your zords are no match against those fighters. Right now, you're to retreat. Maxwell will tell you where to go. Wait, where are you going? I'll tell you later. Just get on the teleportation pad! What can I do? How can I help? Tommy, best thing you can do right now is to follow my orders. But what about Rocky? I'll make sure he's here. Now please, just go! Billy and Adam reluctantly get on the pad. Kat, Tommy, and Tanya follow as well. Maxwell presses a button to teleport them away. What do you want me to do, sir? Make sure everyone else lives. I'll make sure they have something to live for. Mitchell runs into the hallway in the opposite direction of fleeing people. Amidst all the alarms and evacuation sounds of the Sector Omega base, Rocky DeSanto sits by himself. Everyone else is running for safety. And what are you doing? Is this how you want to die? There's no point to any of it. Listen, I know how you feel. Oh, please. I am so sick of the I know how you feel speeches. What could you possibly know, huh? My son died! What? It's... It's not something I like talking about. It happened years ago. Back when I was a... A very different person. I drank... A lot back then. One day I, uh... Had more tequila than I was supposed to. And... Stupid me, I decided to drive. My daughter and son were in the car with me. She made it. He didn't. Well, why are you telling me this? Because ever since then, I devoted myself to helping people. I started as a firefighter. Then I joined the Navy. I figured if I could save enough people, it would make up for the one life that I took. But it's never been able to make up for it. There's not a day that goes by where I don't think of my son. So I'm not telling you to get over Aisha Campbell. But you have a choice right now. You can think about the one life you couldn't save, or you can focus on the many that you can. Rocky contemplates his decision. I hate to rush you, but this base is about to be destroyed. We don't have much time. Okay. What do you need me to do? Follow me. 
Rocky follows Mitchell to a secure lab. Mitchell attempts to use his pass card and retina scan, but the system is glitchy. Access denied. Access denied. Oh, forget this. Mitchell grabs a nearby fire extinguisher and breaks open the lock with it. Once inside, he grabs two cases and hands them to Rocky. This case has the inactive power coins. Kimberly's, Tommy's, even David's old Pegasus Thunder coin. And the other? It's a black box we recovered from the wreckage of the command center. What good will that do? I don't know, but my instincts tell me you'll need it. Now move your ass into the teleporter room. They'll be here any moment. What about you? There's a... There's a staff from Serpentera I need to find in this room. You can't afford to wait for me. No, I can help. Oh no, they're already here. Rocky, please, go. Private Maxwell is already there. He'll take you to safety. Whatever happens, don't wait for me. That's an order. Rocky reluctantly nods. He runs in the direction of the teleporter room with the cases. Ah! An impact from a machine fighter knocks Rocky off his feet. When he looks back, the hallway he emerged from is filled with rubble. Mitchell, no! Remembering Mitchell's last words, he knows what he has to do. Rocky runs for the teleporter room. The four industrial-sized teleporter pads are abuzz with activity as everyone in the base runs through them. The lights on the machine flicker on and off. It is uncertain if the pads work properly, but they are the only hope for the denizens of Sector Omega. Maxwell gestures Rocky to the one on the right side of the room. Where's Mitchell? He's the only one unaccounted for. He's looking for some staff. He ordered us not to wait for him. Understood. Let's get on the pad then. Where are we going? Somewhere safe. I hope. Good enough for me! Maxwell presses a button on a console that is flashing intermittently. The two step forward onto the pad as the teleporter beam activates. Rocky and Maxwell are the last to arrive at UAOH. No one even notices their presence. All the men and women at the base have their eyes focused on an old-fashioned television screen that displays a message from King Mondo. People of Earth, hear me. I am your new regent, King Mondo. By now, you will have seen that your governments and military command posts are no more. The technology you depend on can no longer help you. Thus, it is time to ascend and become part of the Great Machine Empire! Oh no, not again. Not this world too. There must be something we can do. All First World countries' governments have fallen. The Pentagon is gone, communications are down. We've lost. Like hell we have. Rocky, are you alright? Yeah, I am. And we're not giving up. Not this time. Me, you, and Billy can still morph. We can use our ninja zords to defeat those machines. You can try, but they will never be enough to stop them. Huh? huh? What the? Who are you? A friend. And I'm here to tell you that three rangers are not enough. You'll just be giving your zords to the machines. And your powers, for that matter. We can't just do nothing! I can make you stronger. Did he bring me my staff? Staff? With a startling realization, Rocky looks back to the spot where he teleported to seconds ago. He hopes Mitchell will arrive any second now. When he doesn't, Rocky grieves a sigh. I don't think the staff is going to make it here. Hours pass with no appearance from Captain Mitchell. The refugee personnel from Sector Omega are shown accommodations at UAOH base. The active rangers, Adam, Billy, and Rocky, meet with Lieutenant Stone and Trey to discuss a new course of action. Also present are Tommy, Kat, Tanya, and Maxwell. So what exactly is this place? We were founded as a military bomb shelter. When this nation signed the UAOH treaty, we were chosen to be the representing facility. But the machines have been attacking military bases all over the world. How come they haven't attacked here yet? I can only speculate but it is possible they do not know it exists. 
It was built into the side of a mountain, so it has always been hard for satellites to detect. All of the systems here are also analog, so that might make it harder for the machines to infect. Seems like being old school came in handy for you guys. And what's your story? I was a slave for Lord Zed. When he fell, I took my opportunity to recover the Zeo crystal that belonged to my people. Right. He worked for Zed, and we trust this guy? Yeah, well, Mitchell trusted him, and that's good enough for me. What exactly about Mitchell? Are you sure you saw him die, Rocky? It looked that way to me. Maybe he's still alive and just buried under that rubble. If the staff is there, we need to find it before the machines do. It holds a tremendous amount of power. If the Machine Empire gets it first, your world will fall, just like Triforia and countless others. It seems we've already fallen. They took us out in a matter of minutes. This is only the beginning. Unlike Zed, Mondo does not believe in subjugating worlds. He wants to improve them. Improve? How? By making you cyborgs connected to a hive mind, one upon which he and his royal family rule. I'm confused. A family of machines. It's a long story, but the short version is insanity, brought upon a wish to be more like biological beings. Oh god, I can't believe this. I just left one apocalypse to come to another. There must be something we can do to stop this. Unfortunately, without the staff, you would need an alternate power source to charge the crystal. I don't know if there is anything that powerful on this planet. Power source? Do you think we will be able to use our power coins to charge it? Hmm... It is possible. But only three coins would not be enough. I have the others. Rocky holds up the case of the power coins. We can try it, but I should warn you that the crystal will drain the coins of all of their power. You'll never be able to use them again. Half of them don't work for us anymore, so the way I see it, they're useless anyway. Very well. Trey lays down the Zeo Crystal as Rocky opens up the case containing the power coins. Rocky hands him the two working coins in the case, as well as his own coin. Billy and Adam do the same. Trey places the five coins at strategic points on the crystal. Zaps of electricity emerge from the crystal as the coins make contact. The power coins go dim as the Zeo Crystal shines. It is the end of one era, and the beginning of another. The main crystal breaks apart into five sub-crystals, each with their own shape. There is a pink oval, two yellow oblongs, a blue triangle, a green rectangle, and a red five-pointed star. What happens now? Yeah, do we just take the powers? I think we should talk about who gets it first. There are five powers here, and I count eight of us. I have no interest in being a ranger. You can remove me from the count. It is not for any of us to decide. The crystals will choose who they accept as their host. You have to be worthy. Who wants to go first? I guess I'll start. Rocky steps forward and immediately grabs the red crystal. It glows in his hand. Red's been kind of my color for a while now. That is the red star of power. Why do you think you deserve it? Because I'm obviously the best ranger. Look, I knew not to trust Vilius. I'm a capable leader. If I get this power, I can easily defeat the machines and make sure they don't kill anyone ever again. The red crystal's glow fades in Rocky's hand. The crystal has decided you are not worthy. What? No, 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 no way. That can't be right. I am sorry, but the crystal's decision is final. Would anyone else try? I'll give it a go. I was Shadow Yellow once. I think the yellow crystal should work on me. Maxwell takes the glowing yellow crystal. Mr. Maxwell, why do you believe you deserve the yellow oblongs of justice? I don't know what an oblong is, but justice, that's my middle name been working my way up in the military, so I know all about preserving justice. Hope to be a general one day, but I miss being a ranger. So, I really hope I get this. The yellow crystal's glow fades. 
It has decided you are not worthy. Well, damn. There goes my big break. This is stupid. It's just going to keep rejecting all of us. Not necessarily. You will not know until you try. Let me try then. Pink seems to be my color. Cat picks up the glowing pink crystal. Catherine Hillard, why do you deserve the pink oval of welcomeness? First off, who comes up with these names? Second, if this is about welcomes, I don't think I deserve it. I used to be a lot more welcoming, but after Bandora kidnapped my family and what she did to my parents, it's just been hard for me to open up. I am worried that people are still judging me for what I did at Stone Canyon last year. No matter how hard I try, I don't think I can escape that. Cat, nobody is judging you. Yeah, we all know it was an impossible choice. Thank you. You know, it doesn't feel so hard to open up when I'm around you guys. Cat transforms into new pink power armor. Her helmet has a black oval shape for a visor, with an almost Egyptian techno pattern separating the pink and white shoulder parts. It worked. Okay, let me try then. My first color was green, so maybe green will work. Adam picks up the glowing green crystal. Adam, why do you deserve the green rectangle of stability? Stability? I don't know. My life hasn't felt very stable lately. <sighs> I just realized I was gay, I got put in this wheelchair, I have a boyfriend that I don't see much, one of my best friends died, definitely hasn't felt stable. I try my best to move forward and focus on what matters, but it's hard to be stable when the world around you isn't. Whoa! Adam becomes the Green Ranger, his helmet's visor. A large rectangle. The crystal has decided you were worthy. It seems your pursuit of stability was enough. Three left. Who's next? Tanya, why don't you go? Can I do it? I mean, I wasn't ever a ranger before. The crystals do not discriminate. Please take one. Okay, I'll try yellow. Miss Tanya, why do you think you deserve the yellow oblongs of justice? Because justice wasn't something that was practiced on my world. We were ruled by a tyrant. The last thing I want is for your world to end up like mine. If being a ranger helps me prevent that, then I'll do it. Tanya watches in amazement as her body is covered in her new yellow suit. Her visor has two black parallel oblongs. Billy, you go next. You've been blue since the beginning. Billy picks up the glowing blue crystal. Why do you deserve the blue triangle of wisdom? If wisdom means having good judgment, then I guess I'm out. I haven't been making a lot of good choices lately. I thought traveling through time was the right choice, but Aisha died and I've just been... It's okay, Billy. You can say it. <sighs> I've been getting some kind of time travel sickness ever since I got back. My hands haven't stopped shaking, and it's getting harder to remember things. I keep having to ask Adam what I'm supposed to say when I morph. Billy, that's terrible. Why didn't you say anything before? Uh, I don't know. You were just so angry after we came back. Aisha was gone. Didn't want to make it about me. Wait, if he gets this power, the crystal can heal him, right? The glow of the blue crystal fades in Billy's hand. It could, but unfortunately, the crystal has decided he is not worthy. What? This is ridiculous! Rocky grabs the crystal out of Billy's hand. Screw you and your stupid crystals! Billy, if I ever made you feel like you can't talk to me, I'm sorry, man. I'm real sorry. The truth is, I was just so angry after Aisha died. I didn't think about how any of it was affecting anyone else. I made it all about me. Even though all of you were experiencing the same grief I was. Adam, you're right. 
I have to honor Aisha's sacrifice. Maybe I don't deserve the red star of power. Or whatever. But these crystals don't get to decide if me or Billy is worthy. Whether I'm a ranger or not, I promise I will do everything, everything I can to make Aisha's sacrifice mean something. Rocky gains blue power armor, his visor, an upside-down triangle. Whoa! I didn't expect that. But still, I would like Billy to have this. I think he needs it more. Unfortunately, once the crystal has chosen you, it cannot be undone. Billy, why don't you try the Red Star then? Thanks, Tommy. But I think it's more important for you to be a ranger than me. What about your time sickness? We'll figure out another way, but the Power Rangers need their leader. Tommy picks up the Red Star Crystal. Tommy Oliver, why do you think you deserve the Red Star of Power? The truth is, I'm afraid. Of being a Ranger? Of everything. I'm worried I won't be good enough as a leader. I'm worried I'll turn into someone like Draken. I'm worried about having people die for me again. Then it's your job to make sure we don't die for nothing. If Aisha trusted you, then I do too. Now more than ever. I'm still the best ranger though, come on. I trust you too. So do I. My first day as a ranger, I don't have a choice. Thank you. All of you. I'll do my best. Tommy becomes the Red Zeo Ranger. His visor, a central black star, outlined in white. Congratulations. Earth has its team of Zeo Rangers. It is a magnificent sight to see the Zeo Warriors rise once again. Okay, but just give me a moment. I... I have to know. Power down. Everyone gazes in anticipation and hope as Adam's ranger suit vanishes in green light, leaving Adam stood before his chair. He then takes one step, and then another, his legs supporting him. Tears soon follow. Oh my god, it worked. Finally it worked. Thank you. Thank you. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> awesome! The other rangers all cheer and yell, each unmorphing to surround Adam in celebration. Billy beams with happiness and lowers his head. He takes out his old morpher and sighs. For him, for now, it is over. The future is in the hands of the rangers before him, his friends. I hate to interrupt the celebrations, but getting your powers is only half the problem. We still have an army of machines invading the world. Teleport us, and we'll fight them. No teleporters here, I'm afraid. Your government wasn't kind in sharing the alien technology they found. The treaty was supposed to change that, but obviously, here we are. All the Sector Omega personnel are here. We can rebuild whatever we had. Or we'll try to. Your team can even help us make it analog, so the machines can't get through. But even with new powers, with this base, will it be enough? I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know this. It might take a while, but we will be stronger than before. I'm not giving Earth up without a fight. This is our last stand. And if we go down, we're taking the machines with us. Yeah. Right. My personal teleporter has three charges left, but if I overcharge it, it can send you all out to fight, but it won't be able to bring you back. Well... We don't have Zords anymore, do we? I'm afraid not. For now, we start with disrupting them. From last reports before the blackout, the machines install communication towers on Tokyo Tower and the Empire State Building. If we take those out, we can disrupt their communications across the planet. Intel also suggests that each tower gives commands to the COGS in the local area. Without it, they'll be disoriented and easy for our guys to pick off. We can also restore some communications and be able to send the two stealth transports we have in the hangar to bring you back to base. 
So we take down the tower and we can take back Tokyo and New York, maybe even Japan at home. Well, it'd be a start. We could at least talk to whatever army and police are left. Coordinate a counter-strike. Meanwhile, I'll stay here and work on the command center black box Rocky brought back. See if Zordon has any knowledge we can use to stop the machines from carrying out their threats. If I can get to interface these old computers, anyway. Where are there more machine forces? Five isn't an even split. From the last report, there were more in New York. Not many more, but enough. Right. Rocky, you and Tanya take the tower in Tokyo. The rest of you with me. Yeah. All right. Been a while, but yeah, let's go. Trey, how do we morph? To summon the bracers, turn your wrists in a swift 90 degree rotation. They do as he says, and smile in wonder at the devices on both of their wrists. Your Zeo subcrystal has been shrunk into these devices, your Zeonizers. To activate them, place the crystal into the slot on your other wrist and call out your Zeo title. I believe you know how to do the rest. It would also help, once we restore communications, if you each have military designations, like numbers. How about the number of sides to each your shapes? Cat, you'd be Zero Ranger 1. Tommy will be 5. A star has more than 5. Points then. <laughs> Unless you want to be Zero Ranger 10. Fine. Makes sense to me. And it'll give us a morphing call. Make sure we all do it right and in order. Behind him, the others each are doing the math in their heads while drawing shapes in the air. Wait, what am I then? Oh, let's keep it simple. You have two shapes, so you are Zeo Ranger 2, Rocky 3. And I'm 4. Got it. Alright then. If we know what to say, I guess... It's morphin' time! Zeo Ranger 1, Pink! Zeo Ranger 2, Yellow! Zeo Ranger 3, Blue! Zero Ranger 4, green. Zero Ranger 5, red. In Tokyo, the yellow and blue Zero Rangers arrive on top of Tokyo Tower. The Legion of Cogs there, looking up at them. Ranger signatures identified. Eliminate. Several of the COGS faceplates lift up as they fire blasts from their eyes, Rocky and Tanya rolling to avoid them. Whoa! These suits are amazing! I just think what I want to do and it does it! Yeah, you get used to it. Come on, it's superhero time! Hyah! Last one to the tower buys ice cream! Yeah. What is it with you and ice cream? Hyah! What? I like it! Your fault! You told me about it! Yeah, well... I'm sure you didn't come to this universe just to become diabetic. No! As it turns out, I came to be a Zeo Ranger! Rocky turns as he takes down the last cog before him. It suits you, Shock. I'm sorry, you just... remind me of her a lot. Forget it! More incoming! And the ones we knocked down are getting right back up! Let's try these, then! Tanya pulls the modular weapon from her belt holster and raises it, folding it into a gun-like shape and firing the new blaster at the cogs. This time, they stay down. Huh? Good call. Rocky is about to do the same when he recalls something. The last powers have unique special weapons. Let's find out. Rocky grins beneath his helmet as a set of blue and silver tonfas appear in his hands. Oh yeah! He then charges for the cogs and begins taking them down with the new triangular weapons. Try it! I bet you have a power weapon too! Okay. I just think of it? Alright then! Yeah! In Tanya's hands now appear two sets of nunchucks. Oh hell yeah! She too then goes to work. Meanwhile, 
in New York City. I see the tower. Cat, can you get to it? I'm trying. They go down easy, but there are just so many of them. I got it. Hey -ya. The Green Zeo Ranger charges, summoning a set of green hand axes to himself, and then charging into the crowd of cogs. He then begins spinning on the spot, a green energy whirlwind forming that sends all the cogs around him flying. Ha! Hey -ya. Whoa! How did you know to do that? Just like our old powers. It just comes to me. You just need to listen. But it's different this time. Less instinct and more like I hear a voice in my head telling me how to use these powers. Yeah, I hear them too. One's louder than the others. A female sounding voice? Guys, listen to those voices. Do what they say, and we can do this. Each of them then focus, and the remaining two also bring out their own unique weapons. Tommy, a rapier sword with a star at the hilt, and Cat, a Captain America-like shield. Using these new weapons, the new Zeo Rangers battle their way through the forces with ease, and make it to the tower. Okay, Billy, we're at the tower, but it's surrounded by some kind of force field. Any idea how to bring it down? Alright, got it. What'd he say? He said just shoot it. Fair enough. The three then summon and raise their blasters and fire, bringing the shield down soon after. Tommy then brings out his sword again and drives it down into the tower's control panel. It sparks as the comm tower goes dead. Simultaneously in Japan, Rocky does the same with his tonfas. Rangers! Fighters have been dispatched to your locations. Time to pull out. Job well done. All right, we're out of here. Before the Quadro fighters arrive, the Zeo Rangers are gone. Mission accomplished. The Rangers are soon returned to Mountain Base in Canada, the Tokyo team arriving almost a day later. Finally, all are gathered in a large room in the base. Well, now that we are all finally here, well done. All of you. Yeah, and we got our answer. The machines can't track your stealth transports here, and that's some good news. Indeed. How did you get on here, Billy? The black box? Now the computers here are working, I'm trying, but they are decades too old. I need Z-Tech. I can help with that. If we recover enough salvage from Sector Omega, I can help you repurpose it. And I do want to go back for my staff. If they found the staff, they might have found the gems as well. Later. For now, Rangers, rest. We have disrupted their plans today and turned the lights back on here and in Japan. But the machines will rebuild and they have occupied half the Earth. This will be a long war. Yeah, but today we sent them a message. The Power Rangers are back. My love, the Rangers are back in full force and have disrupted our communication networks in two of the major sovereign nations. It is of little consequence. We have already begun the process of ascending hundreds of humans. They will all soon understand that what we offer is greater than they can imagine. Perfection. And once most of the population has been upgraded to perfection, the Rangers will be insignificant. It is already too late. We are inevitable. Now, bring in my new general, Clank. He is here, your majesty. Clank leads into the room a large, imposing figure. That of Mecha Goldar. His body mobile once more, his machine parts glowing red from several upgrades all over them. His eyes glowing red in the dark as well. Ah, your minion has been upgraded to serve me well, Zed. Perfection. I can do you one better, father. 
Mondo shifts to look over at his son as he leads another figure with glowing red eyes into the room. I realize that since our upgrades can bring any biological life forms back from what they call death, <laughs> that I would exhume and upgrade anyone. What other? Well, let's just call it what it is. Revenge. The rest of the machines look on as from the shadows steps a robotic skeleton, a long dead corpse, his remains now plated in chrome. But the armor shape around it is unmistakable, the design now completely indistinguishable from the chrome skeleton beneath. I told you I'd see your real skeleton, Rito. 